Well, um, kia ora everyone. My name is Tash and I am the Otago Southland PTC, which is your personal training council ambassador. And I also own a women's fitness studio down here in Dunedin. So I thought that it would be really great. Every month, the um, Personal Training Council, they put on, I'm just going to admit some more people. Here we go. Let them come in. This is great. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Hey, kia ora, everybody. Nice to have you all with us. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, I'll just very quickly um, introduce myself again. My name is Tash Columbus, and I am the Otago Southland P uh, Personal Trainer Council Ambassador, and I own a women's fitness studio down here in Dunedin. Now, um, every month, the Personal Training Council holds or hosts a little Zoom meeting with lots of information, and there we give out like, loads of free information from anything from marketing through to you know, good way, good ideas of how to onboard clients. And then we came up with the idea of, oh, sorry, here we go. It's still got people joining. This is great. Hi, Jenny. Kia ora, Jenny. So we came up with the idea of um, holding a meeting, getting to know the what, what's what and the who's who in the industry. I've been in the industry since 2013, and I know it took me a really long time to under, understand exactly what reps were all about, what Exercise New Zealand was all about, and the Personal Training Council. I didn't even find them till uh, last, at uh, the end of last year, I know the year before, sorry. So I think this is a great way to um, get to know just what's happening and, and who to go to with any questions that we have. I am gonna ask my little panel of Abby, Stephen and Nikki to type your email address in the notes if that's okay. So if anybody is wanting to reach out and make contact with you guys, they can do so. Uh, and also, if you've got any questions, team, thanks, Abby. I will um, we'll check in with you all after everybody's sort of had their, had their week chat. But I wanted to uh, start with Abby from the Personal Training Council. She is our fearless leader. Um, and let's get to know a little bit about the PTC, shall we? So first up, Abby, how long have you been an, an ambassador for Personal Training Council? I came on board, hi everybody, um, I came on board in 2019 um, when I was under the leadership of uh, Jean Scott. She sort of <clears throat> gave me a shoulder tap once at an um, evening event at the awards, the exercise awards and said, hey, do you want to come and join us? We've got no one in Hamilton at the moment. So that's how I came to be part of the council as an ambassador. But before I'd been to lots of meetings right from when I began as a PT in 2016. So had heard of it yeah. for a few years. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. It's such a great resource. But um, the, the biggest thing that I sort of thought when I heard of the PTC was, is it just for personal trainers? Absolutely not. So we have a really comforting open space for any fitness professional. We'd love to think it's in a bit of a network for anybody in the mm. fitness industry, no matter what your role is, whether it's that you're a student coming into the industry or still yet to be in the industry itself, um, right mm. through to those that have been here for many, many years or even in more of the, um, you know, presenting or um, outside roles within the industry as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, which is which is really great. Um, is there a cost to being a member? Not at all. Everything's free. So <laughs> everything you see, whether it's the, um, you know, bits and pieces you find on the Facebook group, everyone can join that for free. Um, when it comes to our events like this, obviously, you've not had to pay for something like this. And then all of the um, meetups and things like that that go on within each region, which are run by the regional ambassador for that particular area, um, are generally free as well. We haven't got any um, cost to those meetups. So it's usually a meet and greet within a gym or a coffee shop um, that you can just go along to as you can, if you can fit it into yeah. your day. Yeah, that's really cool. Thanks, Abby. Um, what, how have you seen uh, members use the Personal Training Council to help them and what kind of interactions do you see? Yes, there's so many ways. So the first, um, I guess, smaller sorts of interactions might be anything from a phone call one-to-one -one with an ambassador. So it might be such that a new PT um, calls the local ambassador in the, in the area and says, hey, I'm looking for XYZ or I really need to be put in touch with so-and-so. Um, and so that's where an ambassador can come in handy, um, right through to obviously the likes of this sort of event here. So everything in between, whether it's that there's a meetup coming up. Um, it might be that 
the ambassador for that region, as I say, has set up a coffee shop meetup and everyone can go along and just um, meet, meet and greet and chat. It might be that instead there's a little bit more of a um, an event as such, so it might be such that there's a speaker or mm. somebody who's coming along to speak or, or from that particular gym. If it's a meet, a meet up at a gym, there might be a gym manager um, doing a bit of a tour. There's all sorts of ways that the, the, mm. the um, ambassador can choose to um, sort of showcase or put on off or put an offering out to that region. Um, it might even be that a uh, ambassador has come in touch with a gym manager or vice versa, and so that gym manager has invited the personal trainers council to come and host a meeting within their space oh. and start uh, getting to know what the PTC does. There's lots of different ways. Um, mm. We've also had the likes of you know a dietitian or a marketing person um, come and guest speak at our meetings and things mm. like that. Let alone you know people within the industry. So there's lots of different ways that the personal trainers council has benefit to any personal trainer at any level of mm. their or any level of experience in their career. So lots and lots of ways. But like I say, I think I think the biggest and most valuable is those little one-to-one -one connections as well. Just having a person to reach out to either by email or um, whether it's in the, in the hub itself, mm. messenger or a phone call, it's, it's really an extension of what a lot of these ambassadors are doing already. They're all people who want to help network and help people get from A to B um, in the best yeah. way they can and, and quickly, you know, it's such a big industry even though we are a little place in New Zealand and especially in some of these regions you feel like you're um, a small small fish but at the end of the day having a, an ambassador like we've got in each part of the country to kind of reach out to and and for free you know these are really yeah, yeah. Um, options that we have as PTs and especially those that are um, more experienced or some of these ambassadors they're willing to help and it's really something that they love to do to give back because we've all been personal trainers asking for a hand up at some point in our career and it's really nice to give back to those that are needing it for their starts for their beginnings yeah. and journeys. I 100% agree Abby I think it's um yeah it's a, an invaluable tool that um our industry has actually how many hubs is there across New Zealand? So we're right from Auckland right down to the bottom right where you are so um every um, every region is covered so you just have to do a quick little check. Not all of them are manned, so that's probably another point to make is if you're in some of these areas and you're not really seeing much going on in your hub at the moment, um, it might be that we need a little bit of a, a hand. So ambassadors um, at the moment we have uh, up, up north in Wangarei, we have Tash, Bubia. Um, in Auckland, we have Rain, uh, Kirsten and Keeley. Myself in the Hamilton and Bay of Plenty. Um, then we're down in Taranaki with Gary who can give us a wave. <laughs> and Grego is in the Napier Hawks Bay area. Um, down a little further, we have um, Jessie and Andrew. Jessie, are you here? Not to yes. see, but she's here. So yes. Jessie and Andrew in the Wellington area. Um, and they're also looking after the Mulberry area for us as well. And then oh. down in the south, we have yourself in Otago. So at the moment, that's all we have. We're looking for someone wonderful in Wellington um and some of those small areas Tasman and Marlborough as well so mm. yeah everywhere's covered though everywhere you've got someone to reach out to and if it's not one of these people in particular um you know it might be that they know somebody else if you're looking for a certain person in a certain area or perhaps they're about a certain thing maybe it's bodybuilding that you want some more information on you know Greg knows all about it um you know if it's about mm. marketing that's Gary he's really awesome with his marketing so we can all sort of help each other out and piggyback mm. on another as well lots of skills yeah. with ambassadors if not maybe someone that they can forge you on to yeah absolutely um and and that's the great thing is that we are all so willing to do that as well absolutely. Eh? yeah um and, and that was going to be my next question was are you currently looking for any more ambassadors but you answered that beautifully already yeah. so thank you. Yep. we've got someone in wellington who'd really love to join us but ultimately we love to think that um if it's something that you have a calling mm. for and you feel it's a, you know an extension like we say of what you're already doing maybe you know like yourself Tash I know that Kirsten's mm. got a big community as well they, they, all of the ambassadors have um, a face within the industry I guess of their own and, and that's something that we'd love to think that these particular people who become ambassadors already have going for them they love to be networking and and bringing people together and helping people out so if that's something that you think you'd like to have part of your um 
you know your offering to the industry and, and obviously it gives back to you as well there's lots of rewards within being part of the personal trainers council as well um, and just the know-how and, and bits and pieces that you can gain for yourself being part of this particular group come to us you know we don't always want to yes. um, put the pressure on people and the spotlight on you if you're not that way inclined but for a lot of the ambassadors it's um it's a real it's a real reward to be part of something um special and kind of hear what's going on in the in the wider yeah. industry as well so yeah reach out to us if you think that's something you'd like to do because we certainly oh. want passionate people that are keen to put their mark on the industry and help people up as we say so oh, yeah absolutely and, and what do you think our main goal is as a personal training council what's our collective yeah, well, main like the goal? mission of the of the personal trainers council is to to help connect people and to bring a um a collaborative sort of space to the industry so that people feel really um forthcoming to to be around one another and, and know each other from different gyms and all those sorts of things um, and we measure our success on how many industry how many um, professionals we have within our hubs and bits and pieces like that um, but we also like to think that we can help people to sustain their careers within the industry so um, you know if we're finding that that statistic that's unfortunately not so wonderful at the moment if we can mm. build that and then the average lifespan or career length of a, of a personal trainer is starting to improve because they feel they've got a community and hand up and they've got support and all those things that make a career a special part of a journey you know and make it mm. interesting and exciting and, and successful ultimately um, then you know we we kind of would like to think we can claim a part of that if we are able to help people sustain within their knowledge, their experience, their connections, all those sorts of bits and pieces that help to keep a career going. So um, yeah, that's basically what we're all about is just being a point of contact for those needing needing some information, some education. We've obviously got lots of resources on our website that are available for free as well. So every time one of these particular um, videos here that you've got you know we've got a recording going right now all of those videos are posted to our website we have heaps and heaps of resources podcasts webinars all sorts that have gone on before and most yeah. of that information the odd bits and pieces might be um a little outdated as such but it, most of it's very very um relevant still um all of those resources obviously the chance to to meet with the ambassadors or reach out to those people so there's lots and lots of value that you can find on the website as well yeah. um so yeah so that's basically what we're about is, yeah. is making sure people can sustain themselves within our industry and have long rewarding careers yeah that's really cool thanks abby we are totally here to help hey does anybody in our wee group have any questions if you do please feel free just to unmute yourself and ask away there's no such thing as a stupid question you know you don't know what you don't know so please feel free no one's unmuting so um or you're welcome to drop it in the chat too if, if you'd like to but what we might do thank you so much abby oh, is no head over to the lovely nikki williams now nikki is from um exercise new zealand and now if you didn't know exercise new zealand actually had a huge part in keeping the gyms open over COVID. Uh, they put together a really in-depth um uh, what was it called, COVID protection uh, framework, and they advocated on our behalf uh, to the government. And then what they did, some of you may have been in the meetings uh, through, I think our first lockdown, which I can't even remember when that was in 2020, um, they held, I feel like it was almost weekly meetings, keeping us all up to date. And they actually opened that up to the whole country. And I think we had probably 500 plus members, yeah, join, which was really, really awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So I believe that it's because of the app, because of Exercise New Zealand's really quick action is that they kept the gyms in New Zealand um, being closed from the government. But um, that's 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 sort of my take on it anyway. Would I be right, Mickey? <laughs> yes, it's definitely it's it's for sure that we had a, a part in that with the advocacy work that we did, definitely, yeah. Mm. Hey, um so Nikki, how long have you worked for Exercise New Zealand? I am, I am heading into uh, completing my third year. So yes, I was an ambassador of the Personal Training Council previous and they overlapped a little bit, but I've been three years in this role. Oh, I didn't know you were one of us to start with. Yep, Auckland yeah. ambassador for many years. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Um, hey, now I've got I've got a few wee questions, things that um, I thought that I didn't know when I was, um, you know, even just a few years ago. Um, and again, if anyone's got any questions, we'll fire them up at the end. But is Exercise New Zealand just for exercise facilities? 
It's a great question, actually. It's for exercise businesses in New Zealand. So yes, correct, facilities, but also it's for personal trainers that have um, their business in their garage, or maybe it's um, for a business that doesn't have bricks and mortar. So you might find you have an online presence, you have a couple of trainers working for you and you're working in community spaces, running boot camps, for instance. Yeah. But it's anybody that's running an exercise business inside New Zealand, that's who yeah. we are. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. I actually didn't know that. Um, so thank you. Uh, and let's, um, the other thing that I was quite confused about when I first signed up with Exercise New Zealand and Reps was, um, do you need to be a Reps member to be an Exercise New Zealand member? Yeah. Okay. So no, you don't. The short question is you don't need to do both. We have a code of ethics that's to, um, printed and delivered to Exercise New Zealand members. And on that, it says that you're also a reps register facility. So if you are both, then, you know, proudly put the code of ethics on your wall, but it's mm. not, um, yeah, they're not codependent. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That's real interesting. Hey, um, so what sort of support does Exercise New Zealand offer? Us. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Hold it on. <laughs> I think the easiest way to start this is there's three pillars. So you've talked about the advocacy piece, and at the moment it's massive around the COVID space, but we've also done music licensing, um, advocacy, and childcare advocacy as well. So that's an ongoing piece. Another pillar is for support, and another one is for growth. So I'll start with growth and move back to support. Growth is around, obviously, the events that we put on, our members get discounts to them, but it's also around having an opportunity to take part in surveys and research and getting the, the answers back from those research. So if our members are, are asked to take part in um, a survey pre-COVID, post-COVID and see what's happened to their business. And then those members also get the results, which is a great way to see what's happening yeah. and where you sit within New Zealand and facilities of your type. Um, because, you know, similar to the PTC, we can feel very isolated and we're doing our day to day, you know, heads down, bums up kind of thing. And it's nice to know where we fit in the New Zealand space. So the growth is around the, you know, exercise, industry research surveys data and also the the events and then the support and this has been a big piece uh, throughout the last couple of years and beyond but it's around everything you can think of about having an exercise in uh, business in New Zealand everything from what does your membership documentation say what do your PT contracts say? What does your HR look like? What's health and safety look like? And uh, as a member, you get access also to guidelines, but also PDFs that you can use for your own business to save a lot of time and a lot of work. The biggest one that I think at the moment is the one-on-one -on -one support. Everybody's got quite a different business. So, okay, the, the framework you mentioned, thank you. It, that's on our website. And um, that's you know, this is what you need to know, but my business does this, my business has a, a sauna. And, you know, there was loads of questions around what can I do with this small difference that I have in my, um, in my facility. And that's where you've got one-on-one -on -one support with myself. And then beyond that, the rest of the team, if I don't know the answer, then I know someone that does. The other one that is worth knowing right now, because it's a big piece of what's happening right now, is jobs, 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 jobs. You know, people are looking for people and there's a job listing on there. So as a member, you get um, unlimited job listings on the job site. Um, and then also as a member of the exercise industry, please have a look at what jobs are on there. Um, so just go to what we do and then um, you can see the job list um, mm. in the exercise um, website, Exercise New Zealand website, and it's there. Yeah, I didn't, um, didn't know that. Yeah, so that's mm. kind of what that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. You must be very busy, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's there's a website that that if you're a member, you can go to and you can log on and, and does that have all your PDF stuff there, like your health and safety. Um, yeah, and so once you've got your login, there's a next door to the login, it says my page and in there it's all the, I often get this question, so it's great to be able to answer it too, generally. Um, so under my page, that's where the PDFs are and the guidelines and the, and the research that we've done so far that you can have access to and a lot of information there, yeah. Yeah, and I know um, from my own personal experience with that first lockdown that we went into, um, 
Nikki, I'm sure you must have rung nearly every business in New Zealand just to check in on them. And it was great because I certainly was falling apart. Um, so to be given the call from Nikki uh, and just to let me know that um, I wasn't alone and I wasn't the only one really struggling with what was happening. So it was, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, no, you're welcome. I did phone everybody at least twice. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> once at the beginning and once at the end. How you, and the yeah. answers were different. Um, oh, I bet. It's, been, it's quite an honour to hear people's stories as well. This, yeah. Um, yeah, and we're quite an inspiring bunch. We inspire our clients, but also when I speak to the, the members, um, they inspire me too. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. No, thank you. Um, is there anything else you think that I've missed? Or is, have anyone got any questions they'd like to fire at, up at, at Nikki? Nikki is unbelievably approachable. I've um, had quite a bit to do with Nikki, what feels like over the last few years. And um, she is always there to answer any questions and nothing is ever a stupid question, right, Nikki? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I would like to add, because we just spoke about what we do, but I think why we do what we do, exercise news mm. is about... Being, it's, think of a bigger picture. You are part of, you, you. when Richard talks to the government and talks about our members, you are one of those members and every single one of our members, uh, reps, registered trainers, as well as Exercise New Zealand members are, are, are important to the weight that Richard has when he's talking to the people that are making changes and Stephen as well, when he's talking to the Allied Health Aotearoa in New Zealand. You know, we, we have a greater weight when we have members. So it's it's a... It's a win, 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 win in the fact yeah. that we, we are, you know, you are supporting us so that we can support you. And so it's, yeah. there's more of a bigger picture as to the membership as well as joining. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone got any questions for, oh yes. I was gonna ask why, or what's the difference between being a person who's, um, well, it's probably more reps actually for Stephen, becoming um, registered with the Exercise New Zealand versus becoming registered with reps as a single, as a facility, that kind of thing. Maybe. Okay, so, I mean, if we think about the Exercise New Zealand supports the business and reps does the individual. So if you have a business and you want business information, you know, what happens when my mum brings in a two-year-old, what are my health and safety requirements when that two-year-old's watching? What if mum brings in a 14-year-old that wants to train? What are my um responses there what does my health and safety processes look like i want to bring on a yoga instructor to subcontract to my pts what can, agreement can i have so if you think about everything business that person that personal trainer would need exercise new zealand and then i'll let stephen <laughs> explain mm. that. it's a good segue into reps really um, but if we think okay. about the individual trainer where their qualification is their scope of practice whether they want insurance you know all the rest of it that reps office so that's really does that answer your question we've got the business and the individual that's kind of how i explain it Brilliant. great question abby well done mm. um all right stephen shall we thank you nikki shall we move over to you because um reps is one that i do find quite confusing so i'm really excited to uh, hear your take on it and, and let's start with how long have you been with reps well, firstly, I'm sorry to hear that you find it confusing. So we'll. Um, oh no, no, that, that is that is that is the wrong <laughs> word. There, are, there's some wee things that I'd like to um, understand a little bit more. Sure. Yep. So now I've been. I was um, with Exercise New Zealand for 12 years, and then moved to Reps, and I've been with Reps for 13 years. So wow. my involvement in the industry started uh, actually working for a gym back in the days when. Gym membership spiraled down in 1992 to $189 a year, and they were just downwards, downwards. They used to be five or six hundred. So I came into the industry okay. then, worked for a gym in sales and marketing. Um, gyms didn't have sales and marketing in those days. You just walked in and then ended up buying out the gym because I didn't like the way the owner ran it. And he said, oh, buy me out. So it's like, okay. So that's my entry to, and then owned two gyms that were, you know, both very successful and, you know, sold them at their peak, as you should do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, so I, I do have quite a lot of understanding of this industry from a practical side and also that exercise NZ side um, and the reps. And, we, and we've certainly seen reps go from strength to strength yeah. over, over that period that, uh, you know, when we first started, uh, we, when I first started reps, we had around 1,400 people on the register and we now have 
three and a half thousand. So wow. over 75 percent of uh, those people delivering exercise in New Zealand as a courier uh, registered with reps. So we certainly have that critical mass, uh, which is really, you know, what, what it's all about. Yeah, that's really good. And I love the fact that you do have a real good, solid understanding of the industry as well, um, being so thick in it for so long too. So that's great. Um, so why don't we start with, uh, do you need to be quali a qualified personal trainer to be a reps member? Yeah, so the register is based around qualifications and having people who who meet industry standards so really you know without without standards um the, the industry is nothing and we're judged by our lowest common denominator so uh and, and it always was in the past that bodybuilder who, who um you know would you know my arms are my qualification that's where, and we, we actually when i first started at reps we did have people who would send a photo of themselves in and say that's my qualification so and i'm not i'm not joking uh so so we've moved from from those days to um where as i say we have that critical mass of people on the register which means we can influence the qualifications and and um it, it means that people who didn't want to be part of standards before almost are dragged along the journey and have to be now because if you're not part of it um, well, you know, then you, you're not going to, you're not going to make it. So, oh. so the reps, the standards are all based around the industry self-determining its standards. So reps itself, we don't set the standards, you know, we're just the, the guardian of the industry standards. So there's, um, there's, uh, processes of how we go out to industry through, get the feedback of the industry. And, and that includes qualification providers as well. And through that process, the reps registration levels are created by what the industry sees the standards. Uh, the great news as part of that is, so in the past, qualification providers could just create whatever they wanted. And we had this whole mishmash of you'd have a different qualification in Tauranga to what you'd have in Wellington. Um, and they would always say, well, the qualifications are based around regional needs. And then we'd say, yeah, but what if the trainer moves from there to Wellington? Mm. Which is exactly what would happen. And then the, the gym owner in Wellington would say, why does this you know, person not know all of this stuff? And we're saying, because the system's broken. Mm. So what's happened over time is reps and exercise New Zealand on behalf of industry has a lot more um, ability to I guess, influence um, the, the way that the qualifications go now. And actually on that front, straight after this call, I've got a call with the, the Workforce Development Council, it's called, it's a new thing, and, and they develop the qualifications for our industry. So they, they want to have a call today and have a chat about where should we start this journey with reviewing the qualifications. So, mm -hmm. so that's where reps, I, I, I probably haven't quite answered your question totally there, but it's the... the mm -hmm. The standards are set by industry and it's making sure the qualifications meet those standards oh. of what industry said and making sure the qualifications are based around occupational roles rather than, than just a nice pretty sexy course which a qualification provider wants to sell to a, someone who's leaving high school rather than the job role and 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 you know this again was a complaint in the early days about these people coming to work at facilities um, they don't know what they're doing they don't understand about sales marketing so um, one thing uh, that reps will be uh, trying to encourage as part of this qualification review this year is a greater focus around behavioral change uh, which is how do you actually support the client rather than just the exercise prescription because qualifications have been so much based around just a whole lot of exercise knowledge. Uh, as I say, because part of it was qualification providers trying to make it all interesting for the student rather than thinking about the, the occupational role later. And funny enough, I saw on Facebook just a few days ago, there's like a, a PT's group, an Australian one. And there was this trainer there who was saying, I'm getting so many clients who are crying and complaining about COVID and all this stuff and what can I do to stop it? I'm like, that person has missed the boat totally. Yeah. You've got a client there you're going to have for life. 
the fact that that person put it in a group and was trying to discuss how to stop yeah so we have well, if we're going to really go that next level the industry and the exercise professionals have to understand about that whole behavioral change engagement with clients getting their families on board finding out that burning issue all the things that you're probably advocates of this as well but until we nail that we're, we're going to miss opportunities um, yeah i agree yeah. That's really exciting, actually, really, really exciting. I know um, many years ago when I first started, within that first month, I was like, oh, my God, I wish I had some kind of psych degree. Um, yeah. I could, and, and I'm, um, you know, I'm very good. I, I will completely stay in my lane. But we're so much more than just an ex exercise provider, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, and also the, the interesting part is that other bodies like ministries of health and so forth, they they can see that there is more of a role for exercise professionals, but I can chat about that later. But again, mm. we need these skills on how we can do these other things. Um, in actual fact, uh, Richard, the CEO of Exercise New Zealand, often makes the comment that there's too much exercise knowledge. You know, the exercise professional just has to go out there and overload the client with all this information about exercise, whereas all they really want sometimes is just a bit of guidance and help mm. with sleep and, and nutrition. So yeah yeah absolutely um so my next question for you is why do we have reps but you have covered a lot of that um in what you just said but is there anything you think that you can touch a bit more on yeah so the reason we have reps really um as i said is the industry self-determining because if we don't have reps then what's happened in other countries which haven't had registration bodies is the government regulates the industry so, and it's usually when something goes wrong, and we've seen it in our own country that uh, the taxi industry, you know, didn't have good standards and a driver was killed. And then suddenly every taxi has got to have all these additional things. We saw it in the real estate industry, but they didn't self-regulate and the forestry industry. So if you don't regulate or don't set your standards yourself, when something goes wrong, governments come in and they generally get 70, 80 percent of it right, but the 20 percent they get wrong is, is terrible, cumbersome and onerous. Because if if the government decided that we're going to have registration for our industry, the registration fees would be at least two thousand dollars a year per person. And that's just based on if you look at chiropractors, um, mm. physiotherapy and social workers. And the latest one um, is acupuncturists now have mandatory uh, because again, when it's a government, when the government does these things, they don't have to try and run their registration body as, as leanly and as, as efficiently as possible. It's just, well, these are the costs, how many people divided out. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's really about that self-regulation because we've seen in Portugal, uh, France, South Africa, some countries where the government regulated the industry and they put in, um, rules. Uh, one of them was the minimum qualification requirement was a degree, and that's for group exercise as well. So, you know, <laughs> you explained that one, that one to me. That, that was Portugal. And I, when I go to URSA, which is the international convention, that's where I hear all these stories and learn all of these things. So, um, the, the other part is, is about creating opportunities for, for exercise professionals, and it's something a registration body can do, which would be very hard for ind individual people. And by that, we so we engage with uh, ministries of health, ACCs, Minister of Sport, Sport New Zealand, WorkSafe New Zealand, all those bodies who only re really want to deal with peak bodies, so at the head of, of um, industries, uh, because they don't want to be dealing with individuals. And, and we often get approached here at Reps about, well, ACC, you know, what, what can we do more about? Why, why can't we be funded like physios are? Uh, we, we're doing fantastic work as well. And, and the thing is, you, you're right, you know, you should be, but it's all going to be about standards and qualifications and education sorry, uh, and, and health and safety. So we do these journeys for industry rather than people trying to go out there themselves individually. And, we, and we've made some um, huge steps actually in the last two years. And if you like, I could talk about some of those. Um, mm. Things working. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good. I want to jump in though and say that um, what I think is really valuable is that our members can see that we have reps registered. So they can see that we've got some sort of standard and we're not the cowboys with the 
the six week qualification um, or or the bodybuilder, which we still have plenty in the gyms down here training. Um, that aren't obviously reps registered facilities. So it's really important yeah. for members that they can trust. I describe it to my members like a, um, a, a master builder um, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yes. No, thank you, Tash. You're, you're right. I should stick to the basics as well and get those right in terms of... Yeah, it's that, basics it's that are important. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things we're doing now for that bigger picture is um, one of them Nikki touched on, which is the Allied Health Aotearoa in New Zealand. So that's the collective body of, um, of all of the various industry bodies and registration bodies of physio, chiro, nutritionists, social workers, audiology, acupuncture, massage, exercise, psychotherapy. So they cover uh, a huge range of, of job roles and occupations. And so, so Reps is a member now of Allied Health Aotearoa. And I was elected to the executive as well. So I sit on that executive, uh, which is a very important time to be on that because of the, uh, I don't know if people know, but the, the current government review of the health, uh, well, the, well, the Ministry of Health, uh, there was the Health and Disability Review, which was a huge uh, project undertaken. And the report was released in 2020 which said the health system's broken, it's a mess, it's a shambles, what are we going to do? <laughs> so that's where Allied Health, um, so between our organisations, we spent $70,000 and had a, a report developed, which I'll share a link called Hidden in Plain Sight, which was all about how allied health professions can do so much to help with the, with the range of health issues we have, over and above what's called primary health. So that's GPs and hospitals, because at the moment, the whole system's been GP centric, um, which you probably know yourself. So if you, if you want anything, you've got to go to the GP and get a medication or on a surgery. So the allied health professions have all come together saying, no, that's not the way it should be. It should be more of a, uh, a one-stop shop where all the services are, are in one area and ideally, um, salaried. So if an exercise professional is there, you're getting paid so that there's not this hierarchical issue around, oh, well, that person's a contract. So that's that's what Allied Health's pushing for. And it was presented to the Minister of Health. I went along um, the executive when we met with Andrew Little. He's like, yes, this is good. Um, yep, we need to do these things. Yes, exercise professionals have to have a greater role. They should have already. Why haven't they? So uh, you know, things are, are heading in the right direction. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're pushing ahead on that front as one, one of the projects. One of the things that's come out of that is the long COVID. So we're trying to put together opportunities for exercise professionals now, and that's reps registered exercise professionals, around how we, in conjunction with these other allied health services, so uh, dietitians, uh, chiro and, and physio, because these people are quite broken. Uh, uh, so we want to go as one front <laughs> to the ministry. Uh, we've already had discussions about we want to be part of the solution and we need to be part of it and stop mucking around. We don't need any more reports or anything. We just got to get out there and, and help these people. Yeah. The Ministry of Health has been saying, oh, long COVID's a new thing. We're like, no, well, my new thing's been around for years, two years. Oh, no, but New Zealand's long COVID is different because it's an Omicron long COVID. So we need to have the studies that shows, we like, look, the system, we have, the system was broken beforehand with obesity, inactivity. These are the reasons we have long COVID as well. So, mm -hmm. sorry, I get a bit passionate about these things, but these are the things that we're, that I spend a lot of my time for industry around creating opportunities for for our exercise professionals and i do see long COVID as as one of those so um mm. uh yeah so that's that's something quite large we're working on which mm. is to crack that health nut so that exercise professionals are part of the system it's not necessarily all about money or funding mm. but it's about being part of the solution so then the opportunities are there and then you know we charge out for our services mm. uh, so i do see it coming that we are yeah. definitely 
I've seen the Allied Health Strategy Plan for the Ministry of Health. I got it a few days ago. Exercise is medicine and exercise is in that, whereas it's never been in it before. It's always been our GPs and they can work out yeah. where people go. But GPs don't understand mm. exercise. They never about no. five hours training in it. So, And that's excellent. That's super exciting. Um, yeah. Keeping you real busy as well. Um, let's go back to some basics. So yes. let's just say if a facility was rich registered, does that mean that all the um, uh, all their coaches, their yoga instructors, their group fitness, their PTs, do they need to be registered as well? Yes. So a registered yep. facility agrees that all of its exercise professionals will be reps registered. Right. And we ensure that that happens so that we deliver on that promise to the public mm. that we audit all of the facilities. So every facility gets audited every year where we do a matchup of their exercise professionals to our database. And, and generally it, it matches you know, almost perfectly. Yeah. So, And if your facility isn't reps registered, you still can be, as a, as a coach, you could still be reps yes. registered yourself, correct? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so the benefits of the facility is that Brilliant. there is a, a slightly cheaper fee uh, in recognition of the fact that the facility is helping us to effectively make sure their team are all registered. Uh, but yeah, uh, we have, there's 250, I think it is, or close to 300 uh, registered facilities. So, you know, there's a huge chunk of the, the majority of the brands that you'd expect to be registered with reps are. So mm. yeah, there's definitely uh, the majority are. And, and over time, mm. there's more and more coming on board. And um, the other thing that I, I think is great, you have an insurance option as well for um, the coaches to, to take. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so we do um, have insurance, which is included on any registration level that has the word contractor. Uh, so that's Group X as well. Um, and we, like, we buy 1,800 policies per year. So, of course, with that oh. critical mass... Mm. Uh, we, we get a good coverage and certainly that liability market just speaking to the insurers is becoming a harder and harder market that even for reps you know we have to get out there and do a lot of uh work with the brokers to to to, to have a policy in place so mm. for individuals the the market's really shrinking that they just insurers don't want exposure uh to that whole uh, risk liability market because it's oh. it's just too it is very risky. Like one yeah, one right. claim, yeah, one claim can be three hundred and fifty thousand uh, so. dollars. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, Abby, did you have a question? A couple actually. Um, <laughs> when it comes to it's kind of a nicky thing as well. So when it comes to just being a little bit selfish and talking the dance industry or outside industries, sort of on the cusp of exercise, how can one say? a franchise that has a mixture of sorts of instruction. So whether it's dance instruction, fitness, group fitness, all of those three, when their um, qualifications are in a different space and you then can't become a registered exercise facility because of mm -hmm. those. So is there any kind of plan on the offset to, to bring those sorts of qualifications into their allowance, well, if that makes sense? Yeah, well, you could still be a facility because the fact that dance sits outside of reps means that that's not part of, of a registered facility in terms of if someone's got to dance, teachers as well as exercise, well, we're only registering the exercise side. It's a bit like boxing, that boxing's not part of our, our registration either, you know, like contact boxing. So if someone's got contact, they can have contact boxing, but that's not part of the facility registration that we, and it, because that comes under a different body you know there's a different organization yeah. that deals so dance will be the same that there is so dance if there are dance instructors delivering dance rather than group exercise that wouldn't that wouldn't affect yeah so so you're saying if you had two dance instructors and three fitness professionals teaching as reps registered professionals yeah. within a facility they could still become reps registered uh, well, they reps we've got to come reps registered if they don't meet our qualification requirements. But they, but what I'm saying is they, they won't have to be if they're delivering dance because dance is not part of of the reps registration. 
uh, that that's pretty much how it works in a nutshell. Because you can you could have dance in in your facility because that's a separate part. But sometimes the, the lines do get a bit murky. <laughs> mm, I just wonder because from seeing in the um, Q and A's and things, how many dance teachers are starting to come to the party? Mm -hmm. And I sort of thought, yeah. you know, while it's a personal, um, selfish thing for me yeah. to ask that question, it might also be relevant to others. <laughs> yeah. so. mm, Funny enough, we've had, recent, we've had recent discussions with Dan, Dan's, you know, Dance Aotearo in New Zealand about ensuring their instructors and looking. At, so we're we're actually funny enough having discussions with them. Um, but it wasn't part of the facility, sort of that mandatory requirement. Nikki, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to say there's a good observation there, Abby, because in the exercise New Zealand space, we have more dance schools coming to be members um, because they want the leadership and the clear um, communication that Richard and Exercise New Zealand offers, but we just have to acknowledge that the language is slightly different. But yeah. yeah. Mm. Did you have another question you wanted to answer, Abby, as well? I was going to ask about when it comes to certain gym, not necessarily chains, but just gyms that don't require reps registration. No, no, no. I'm what not sort of the, is there a plan there to, like, how, how can one promote that? Like, are, are, is that a, a mission or, or a goal for yeah. New Zealand it is to try and get yeah. every... Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. So Nikki, who's a business development manager for both Reps and Exercise New Zealand, because Reps is a division of Exercise New Zealand, she has a, a goal to get those facilities on board. There's some facilities that will never get on board uh, because they just have their philosophical views, um, and that's a very small chunk. But our focus has generally been around, let's put our energies into the people who want to be part of this system on the basis that we are a small team and we don't have too many people that we can send out there trying to get people on board who, are, who have not converted. Uh, but we certainly do market to them. And, and again, we find over time things like the conference and road shows and other events, it, it encourages them to be part of the fold. And just, you know, one day then they contact us and say, all right, I'm, I'm ready. Let, let's be part of it. But we're not really losing people, which is a great thing. It's just more we're getting more people on board. But yeah, we certainly do have marketing strategies, but, but we like to focus our energies on the people who are engaged. Um, and certainly at the moment in these COVID times, because we're going to put, a, we're putting a lot of energy into making sure that the industry um, comes back again now, that um, yeah. things are returning. Nikki, if you got something to add to that as well. Yeah, I think this is something that really excites me, actually, because there's new facilities opening up all the time. I know we, we can talk about COVID, but people are still, the businesses are changing hands. Um, individual PTs are going out on their own. There's still, you know, there's trailblazers everywhere. And so I'm hearing um, really positive stuff on that side. Of, and I think it's a family thing. Like, it's about the personal training council reaching out and saying hi and putting that gym owner in contact with me or Abby or somebody that brings them closer, draws them closer to the bigger industry uh, family. I also think that the Q and A's, you mentioned them earlier, that's the other thing. We've got one tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, and so that's another way of just drawing those people closer. And as gyms change hands, what we find is that um, like, to use um, Stephen's word, the philosophy of the old manager is left and the new manager goes, hey, I want more of what's going on over there. And they suddenly come closer. It's a really, it's it's great. It's the, um, yeah, the, the it, but it's a family approach. So I'm, I can talk to anybody, guys, if you've got somebody that you think would be better closer to Exercise New Zealand and reps and the PT Council, then yeah. um, please give them my number. But it's, yeah. it's about all of us talking to those people and saying, hey, did you know that you get this and that and this support and the q and a's tomorrow why don't you come along it's open to everybody so i think yeah family. We, do, we do invest our time into the new people coming to the industry because we do go out and speak to the students at the courses so that that way they have an understanding of the industry and reps exercise new zealand pt council before they actually finish the course. So that's a very valuable use of our time. And Nikki does um, those in Auckland. Actually, I think, um, Abby, I think you're a student at Waikato there, uh, wouldn't it, when I first met you? Was that you a student then or just starting? <laughs> 
I think Abby and Tash both talk to new students. As a distance <laughs> learning girl, but yeah, I did speak to WinTech often. I, I go each year and speak to yeah. the WinTech students. So yeah, that's probably yeah. where I have, where you've got that memory from. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been that. You must have been a WinTech. But yeah. So is there, is there anything, um, any other benefits that we haven't touched on by being a Reps registered coach or a facility? Anything you can think of? Yeah. Uh, well, we do have other things like uh, pre-screening tools and best mm -hmm. practice, so we provide all of that, both digital or paper, um, you know, health and safety best practice, so um, if you follow the, the, the guidance and the, use the tools and resources we provide, if something does go wrong, mm -hmm. uh, it means you've followed the best practice and that's the, the best thing you can do. Uh, and the other is the global recognition and portability. So we work with other registration bodies around the world, which means in both directions. So people coming mm. from overseas countries to New Zealand, and hopefully we'll get a bit of that now that the borders are open. And Kiwis who are going off overseas, um, our registrations are recognised in a number of countries as meeting the qualification requirements uh, without having to go through a whole process. So we're trying to like globalize the industry a bit more as well because we are all in the, the same family and there's much bigger uh, critical mess when you can say we're part of 250 or around 250,000 registered professionals who are part of IC reps you know, which is that mm. rather than just you know we've got our three and a half thousand here which is fantastic but that bigger picture is quite powerful um, and the economies of scale when it comes to things like research projects and so forth, it's so much easier because we need to be an evidence-based industry as well moving forward because we all know that exercise is good for you, but um, governments and so forth need to see the, the research papers that confirm this uh, because mm. they don't want egg on their face later if something wasn't quite right. Mm. Hey, um, I just want to throw it out to anybody else. Has anybody else that is in our little chat here got any questions for um, Stephen or Nikki or um, Abby? Please feel free to fire them away. No? Um, so, oh, yes, Abby. What I was going to say is what's quite neat is that while Stephen talks of growing more global and more bigger and better and all those wonderful things, it's really neat in an industry where, especially when you've got a comparison of two different but similar industries, is that there's still a face to the name and everything is still, let alone the PT Council being a really good networking base. The likes of Stephen and Nikki and Richard, there's very personable people that You're I think right. we don't, uh, we shouldn't take for granted. You know, the fact that we can have special case conversations regarding our industry, our business or whatever, I think that's just incredible. So, yeah, you know, great. in terms of who's in the room or listening right now, just to know, note that that's perhaps something you wouldn't have in other industries, you know, a person and a face to a name that you could actually reach out to and, and speak with and have help you through, especially in a time like now. So, yeah. 100%. <laughs> it's so easy to feel in this industry quite isolated. Um, I, I know myself, uh, we have, um, you know, we're in Dunedin and so we don't get to see a lot of people and when you're in your own facility, you're kind of stuck in that facility. So, um, it's been invaluable for myself to be on the personal training council and it's just I feel like I feel like I'm not on my own and I certainly know that you know reps is there exercise New Zealand is there and um, we are all here to support each other there is plenty of enough clients to go around for everybody and, and it would be really nice to see you know just see us all join together and um, the support is there and they're all willing I guess ask away um, I just said? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to um, second what both you and Abby are saying. It wasn't until I was, uh, I can't even remember how Nikki and I got connected, probably just because I moved out near her. But before that, I was the same as you, Tash, isolated, um, never worked out of a gym. So I was always a sole trader and um, was kind of just feeling my way around um, back when I got qualified. Um, where I got qualified didn't talk to me about reps. And so it was a client who asked me if I was reps registered and I went, say what? <laughs> um, wow. And so that opened up that. And since then things have changed from where I got qualified. They do that now, but um, just the connection with other trainers, feeling part of a supportive community, even taking the allied health to within your trainers, like mm -hmm. Abby was saying earlier, I don't do bodybuilding. I don't do um, specific athlete stuff. Like where we are, we all know who does what. So if it's not your jam, 
Um, like I've just referred a PT, uh, a boxing one-on-one um, client on because I don't want to do that. But I know someone who does. And so even that having that strength within your immediate community and not the fighting for every client is just such a cool um, industry to be a part of that some people don't know about. And it, yeah, the more we can um, spread the love and grow it, the better. So just um, woo woo. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Really, really well said. Thank you. Hey, guys, we've been on here for ages, and I was really hoping that we'd get it all done and dusted in 30 minutes, but we've all got lots to say. So I just want to thank um, Abby, Stephen, and Nikki for your time today. Um, invaluable. Thank you very much, guys. And to everybody who jumped on and listened, or if you're watching the recording a little bit later, um, thank you for your time. And I just, you know, let's go out and finish the rest of the day really strong and um if you need anything you know the support is there and that's really i think the main message we want to get across perfect that's me done guys Thank you. you're welcome Tash, hey thanks I'll just add to that. I'll interrupt you, Tash, because I'd say thank you to you. It was really well organized and the questions were fab. So I hope everybody got um some answers and and what they wanted from it. So thank you for being so you're professional. Welcome. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. But if they didn't get the answers today, you guys are um, so approachable and just flick them a message. Their emails are in the chat. So um, that'll go out with the video recording as well. Lovely. All right, guys. Kakite. Have a super afternoon. We'll catch you soon.